Hello everyone, James from JTS Mass Tutoring here. Today we are going to look at an example on how to determine the number of solutions of a given linear system without actually solving the system. So let's get started. Consider the following augmented matrix. Determine the values of X for which the system has no solution, exactly one solution, infinitely many solutions. So our first step here is to reduce this uh, given augmented matrix into at least a row echelon form. So I've actually done that for you here. So in this video, we're not going to delve on how to reduce a given augmented matrix into raw echelon form or reduced raw echelon form. We have actually done that in some of our other videos. So let's get started here. What will be the value of X for this system to have no solution? So you look at this last row here, for this system to have no solution, this X squared minus one should be equal to zero, whilst this uh, X plus one must not be equal to zero. So it's like you're having a zero here, say, and you're here, it can be any number. So say zero is equal to five, which is impossible. It's a contradictory statement. Zero is not equal to five, hence no solution. So let's get started. X squared minus one is equal to zero. And X plus one should not be equal to zero. All right. This follows that here. X is equal to plus minus one. And X is equal, is not equal to, is not equal to minus one. Therefore, for this system to have no solution, X is equal to one. Only. The reason why we are saying X must be equal to one only, why is it not also equal to minus one? Because we have got a condition here that X must not be equal to minus one. There we are. Right. What is the value of X? What is the value of X? What is the value of X for this system to have exactly one solution? To have at least one solution, right? So you go back again to your last row here. So for it to have exactly one solution, this X squared minus one party should not be equal to zero. And also this part here should also not be equal to zero. So let's get started. So X squared minus one should not be equal to zero. All right. So X should not be equal to zero. Should not be equal to zero. Therefore, for this system to have exactly one solution, X can be any number except minus one or plus one. All right.
Uh, is it making sense? Right, therefore, for this system to have exactly one solution. exactly one solution x okay sorry for that x should be an element of real numbers except plus minus one. Done. So X can take any value in the real number system as long as X is not equal to as long as X is not equal to plus or minus one. There we are. All right. Now, what will be the value of X for this system to have infinitely many solutions? You go back again to that row. So for this system to have infinitely many solutions, that last row must all be zeros. So this x squared minus one part here must be equal to zero. This x plus one part here must be equal to what? To zero. So x squared minus one is equal to zero. And x plus one is equal to zero. Therefore, x is equal to plus minus one, and x is equal to minus one. Therefore, For this system, for this system to have infinitely many solutions right so look at this we are saying x should be equal to plus minus one and uh obviously this part i mean um it's just a repetition we could actually skip that part here but remember there on top of in our first term when we said it must not have a solution x is equal to one so which means we can't put it here so which means for this system to have infinitely many solutions x should be equal to minus one only there we are we are done thank you so much for tuning in if you have any questions please post them on our mini uh website which is a uh, google my business website on our facebook page as well as on our instagram page allow me to do what my mama taught me 
a good visitor knows when to leave, or she would say a good dancer knows when to leave the dance floor. Adios, amigo.